Hi, welcome to the Kubert School presents Basic Drawing with Fernando Ruiz. My name's Fernando Ruiz and I'll be your instructor today. Now I am a, a professional illustrator, cartoonist and comic book artist. Uh, I've been drawing comic books now for uh, over 25 years. Uh, I'm a graduate of the Kubert School myself and I have been teaching at the Kubert School uh, for over 20 plus years as well. And uh, I, I, I've taught numerous classes over the, over uh, at the school over the years. Uh, narrative art, where we uh, talk about how to make comic books. Uh, basic drawing, which is, of course, basic drawing. How to draw. The, 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 it's the, the fundamentals for everything else. And um, many, many other classes. Uh, and you could uh, you could learn about the the school and our program uh, by visiting uh, www.kubertschool.edu uh, and learn about the the school, the faculty, and uh, all the great programs that we have going. And I'll be talking about that more later and as we go. Uh, so as I said, I'm uh, I've been a comic book artist for over twenty plus years. Uh, I've drawn uh, such series. A lot of my work has been for Archie Comics, uh, where I where I drew um, Archie and Friends, Archie's Weird Mysteries, Life with Archie, and the famous uh, Archie versus Predator. Yes, that was a real thing. Uh, in addition to all that, I've also uh, done some work for Dynamite, including uh, Elvira, Betty Page and many other books for them. Um, so uh, today we're going to talk about basic drawing. And what I want to do is really go right to the beginning, really uh, talk about the fundamentals of basic drawing, how to get started. Because uh, I think there's some really important lessons to, to learn right at the beginning. And I know for a, for a lot of people, um, when they first start to draw, uh, or even before they start to draw, there's um, kind of an intimidation factor that sets in. You know, they, there's things that they're afraid to draw, or things that just uh, give them problems. Uh, all of us, we all have that thing that we wrestle with, uh, whether it's drawing people, whether it's drawing um uh, animals or cars, machinery, uh, maybe it's something really specific like drawing hands. Uh, we all have that thing that, that we can't do. It may be a style thing. You know, some of us can draw realistically, but we have trouble drawing in a cartoony way. Or we draw cartoony already, and we can't seem to, to get the handle on, on drawing realistically. Well, what I'm going to show you today is really how all drawing is interrelated. All drawing is the same. And whether you whether you know it or not, if there's any one thing that you can draw, you can draw everything, really, because all drawing is, is, is really the same. Um, and regardless of, of genre or style, so if you if you're drawing, um, if you if you if you can draw, you know, dragons and and you think you can't draw people well you you can you can uh because it's all it's all really the the same thing uh or if you feel like you all you can do is draw in kind of a manga-ish style uh but you can't break out of that you, you can you can again all drawing is interrelated all drawing starts out the same way and um, hopefully you'll see that as we go, and um, hopefully it'll it'll open up new new areas for you and, and show you how to do uh, do great new stuff. Or if if this is your very first introduction ever to drawing, hopefully this will show you how to get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump on over to my uh, to my sketchbook to my paper, and you'll be able to watch as I do what I do. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so got my my sketchbook paper right here. And the very first thing I want to I want to talk about, okay, and this is probably the most important lesson that I could give you is 
that there are six basic shapes, six shapes, where if you master these six shapes, you can draw anything, anything, real or imagined. You can draw anything. All you need to do is to learn how to draw these six basic shapes. And these six basic shapes These six basic shapes, and we'll get in a little closer so you can see. Yep. Let me play with the lighting a little bit. Mm, that's not good. All right. Okay, six basic shapes, and they are the sphere. The cube, and along with the cube, we could throw in um, any distant cousins like rectangles and things like that. Just like with the sphere, we could also include things like ovals and ellipses. They're all they're all mostly the same thing. The cone. The pyramid, the cylinder, and lastly, number six, the wedge. There you go. There you have it. Those are your six building blocks to the universe. If you can master these basic shapes, you can draw anything. There's nothing, there is nothing real or imagined, whether you're drawing things purely from your imagination, like aliens, monsters, whatever you have, uh, or the real everyday stuff like people, cars, animals, horses, that sort of thing. All of it can be broken down into one or more of these basic shapes. Now, why do, we, why do we need to break things down? Well, one of the things that I want to hopefully get across as we go through this is that when something is complicated, when something is scary, when there's something that you, you look at and you say, mm, I, I can't possibly draw that, that's too tough for me. Well, we as artists, we need to be able to look at those things those those objects and we need to break them down we need to take what is complicated and we need to simplify it we need to we need to take away all the stuff that is scary about it and break it down into easier more more easy to handle terms so let's for example think about an arm okay just a regular human arm now when i tell when i when I tell a student, um, draw an arm, you know, right away, often what they think about is, well, I've got to draw um, uh, muscles, deltoids, biceps, triceps, uh, and then, you know, maybe if there's clothing involved, clothing and, and wrinkles on the clothing, what they're thinking about are the details. They're thinking about the last stuff you should really worry about in your drawing. So it, it intimidates, it scares, it, it, it kind of makes the drawing more complicated than it needs to be. But if I tell somebody, draw for me a cylinder, well, a cylinder is pretty simple. The cylinder isn't so scary. So most people could handle a cylinder. So that's what we need to do. We need to take what is scary and break it down into what is not scary. So we go to a fresh page here. Let's say I want to draw that arm, that arm that I mentioned, okay? And what I'm going to do is rather than go in and, again, start out with the, um, the, the muscles and the skin and, and the anatomical detail, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with a sphere, okay? 
Let's get in a little closer. And to that sphere, I'm going to throw in a cylinder and maybe attach another sphere to that cylinder and then throw in another cylinder. And then I'm, I'm going to use a sphere for my hand right now. But here we have an arm, a very basic arm. Now you look at it and you say, well, it's kind of action figure-ish. You know, it kind of looks like a, a mannequin arm or a robot arm. It doesn't look like a natural arm. And you're right. Uh, it does look that way. Um, but this is what we call, this is what we call the under drawing. Okay. This is, this is the foundation. This is the beginning to our drawing. This is where, this is where we get started. Um, if you, if you build a house, uh, you're not going to start that house by by painting the living room okay you're, you're going to build a framework a foundation and that's what that's what your your underdrawing is it's the foundation so what we're going to do is on top of this underdrawing we're going to turn this underdrawing into the final drawing we're going to do what is called refinement which means we're taking these basic shapes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to soften or shape these basic shapes into an actual real arm. And yeah, I, I can go in and, and start suggesting the anatomy, like the biceps, maybe there's triceps back here, the elbow, the forearm muscles, Bulge out for the forearm and then taper in for the wrist. More of those muscles. A little bit of shadow for the elbow. Notice, too, I'm, I'm getting darker as I refine this, as I polish this up. Um, and really, I went darker than I normally would when I did my, uh, my basic shapes for this arm. I went a little darker because I, you know, I, I just want to make sure that this looks good on camera and that you could see what I'm doing. But normally, the, these basic shapes, I, I would be drawing them really just light enough so that I see them, me, the artist. Because me, me the artist, I'm the only one who needs to see them. Um, by the time anybody sees my arm here, what they're hopefully looking at is the, is the finished final drawing. So there we go. I took something, I took the arm, I reduced it to very simple terms, spheres and cylinders, okay? Reduced it to very simple terms, and that was my foundation. Then I built up on those, ter on, on those terms, on those basic shapes. I turned those basic shapes into an arm, hopefully an arm that looks convincing, natural, believable as an arm. So see now, at the very least, if you learn nothing else, you'll learn how to draw an arm and you'll never be disarmed again. Get it? Okay. We'll continue. I also teach humor at the Kubert School. That's another one of my specialties, as I'm sure you can tell right now. Okay, so this is how we draw an arm. And you're probably saying, okay, well, it's, it's an arm. What about other stuff? Well, anything, as I said, anything that you could think of, we can reduce, we can simplify, we can view in uncomplicated terms. So let's get a little bit more ambitious. This was an arm, so what if we take a whole figure, and and I like to use the figure as a as an example because um, all of us we we all want to be able to draw 
you know, people is a common, or people are a common subject, and we all always want to be able to draw our our favorite characters, you know. So I'm going to start out with a sphere. Get in a little closer to this sphere for the the head, and cylinder for the neck. Once again, keep in mind I'm getting a little darker here than I normally would. Cube for the torso, the upper tr main trunk of the body. Now, one thing you may you may be catching on to as you as you watch me do this, I like to move all over the entire body. I do. Um, I don't like to, you know, work on one arm and then go to the other arm. I, I really do prefer to bounce around the entire figure. Uh, and the reason I like to do that is because that helps me keep my eye on the entire figure. So when I move down to the legs, I'm not doing one leg and then doing the other leg. I'm doing a leg. And I'm bouncing back and forth between the two legs. And I'm making it a little darker so you guys can see at home. Um, again, uh, as I mentioned before, when I do this uh, for myself, I'm probably just keeping this very, very light. So what I'm doing here is I am taking the entire body, the entire figure, and I'm reducing that figure to really basic shapes. Again, a lot of people may, may look at the human body, the human figure, and they may say, oh, I, I don't know if I can do that. Or they may say there's certain poses that they feel they can't do. But what we always want to do is take what is complicated and simplify it. Take what is complicated, break it down into what is not complicated. Yes, uh, pecs, abs, battle armor, capes, all of that may be complicated and scary, but a cube, much more manageable. A sphere, much more manageable. So we deal with that first, and we put that in its place first. And then, just like I did before, once our underdrawing is done, we can go into refinement. We can start to shape and make these geometric shapes look more organic. And yeah, we could start to hint at some of that anatomical detail. You know, the other good thing about these basic shapes is that they aren't that much of an investment in time. So if you've drawn an arm and you're not happy with it, you know, you, you drew that cylinder in that sphere in about two minutes. So just nuke it. Just get rid of it. Erase it. But no, never be afraid to erase. And then you could just change the arm. And if I didn't like this one, I could erase that one. And, you know, again, look at how quickly I replaced it. And really, I just wanted to make him look like he was flexing more. And that's why that's why I changed it. But you, you change it to make yourself happy. You got to be happy with what you're drawing. Happy muscles. And yes, I'm shaping everything. And, you know, I'm moving quickly because I, I don't want to, uh, to put you through... Uh, a lot of the process. Um, so I'm, I'm moving along a little more briskly than I normally would. Uh, and I'm making, uh, you know, you might be looking at this saying, wow, he makes it look so easy. Um, keep in mind, I, I you know, I've got, as I said at the beginning, I've got a few years under my belt of experience. So I've drawn a lot of figures. I've drawn a lot of people. Um, so I, I'm pretty comfortable 
drawing the human body most of the time. Um, and you know, you, you never get so experienced or so good that you're not above getting that complicated pose. You know, it, do, it doesn't matter how much experience you have. One day you're going to be drawing a, a certain pose and it, it can be tough. And you know, when that happens, you know what you do? You simplify, break it down. You go back to the basics. Um, believe me, I, I really do practice this, this whole system that I'm talking about here. It just makes things more manageable, more easier. Like I said before, I'm, I'm always bouncing around. I'm, I'm bouncing around the whole body, shaping the cylinders into some calf muscles here, the upper leg muscles, giving our guy some knees. You know, if regardless of what your character is wearing, so if I was drawing somebody like Iron Man or somebody with with uh, real complex battle armor, uh, believe it or not, I would start with the basic body like this. I, I would kind of draw him, believe it or not, as though he were sort of uh, naked. And then what I would do is I would draw the armor on top of him. So, you know, if I if I had him at this stage, yeah, then I could do things like, okay, I'm going to give him his armor, his shoulder pads, things like that. I would also draw, once again, the body very, very lightly so that I can add those details onto him more easily. The face can be its own subject. We could probably do a whole other video just on, on how to draw the face. Hair too, hair too. Hair, hair can be a, its own other topic. So at this point, th this is the final stages where um, I'm going in, I'm adding the detail like the, the hair, the facial features, any sort of uh, costume details. If I want to give this guy, you know, gauntlets for gloves, any sort of utility belt, I'll throw this on him too. You know, any, any kind of gear, holsters, weaponry that he may have, I'm going to add, I'll be adding that now. Again, I'm moving a little briskly just so, you know, just so we could get to talk about everything I want to talk about. Normally, yeah, I, I would take it a little slower. You know, let's say he's wearing boots, maybe kind of armored boots. Anything that would add bulk to the figure, you're still building on that basic figure. So there is a person, a figure. Started out with those very basic shapes, and I built them up into this. I built on top of the foundation, the fundamental, the, the underdrawing, that was my basic shapes, my mannequin. I took what is complicated, this person, this figure, and I reduced him to what is not complicated, my basic shape mannequin. 
uh, and actually, uh, you, if you've ever been to a, to an art store, you've pro you, you've probably have seen those wooden mannequins. Um, and those those wooden mannequins, they're 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 a living um, uh, illustration of this entire this entire theory that I've been talking about. Because when you look at those mannequins. They're not detailed like a real person. They're, they're, they're the figure, they're the human body broken down into its most simplest terms, which is what we're trying to do here. Now, sometimes when I do this and when, when I show this to people, uh, people will say, um, well, that, that's, that's cool, but I'm still not at the basic shape level yet. Um, I, I don't, I, I don't know if I could swing the mannequin. Well, when that happens, no problem. Cause we will get even simpler. We'll get even more basic than that. So if the basic shapes give you trouble, how about, can we draw This guy, recognize him. This is the guy most of us get our start with. When we first start drawing, we, we all start with the stick figure, right? We all start with Sticky the stick figure. This is our beginning. The thing is, the stick figure, as you see him, that is a totally legitimate way of drawing. Absolutely okay. If the basic shapes give you trouble, if that basic shape mannequin is is still a little intimidating for you, go back, go back even more basic. Go to the stick figure. Hopefully, hopefully we're all at this at that stick figure stage. So this really takes everything really down to its most basic level, uh, especially if you consider say even more complicated poses you know say something even more difficult more dynamic um something more involved uh because sometimes you know even even artists who draw um good figures already they may have um they may have uh, difficult drawing that figure in certain poses you know in you know Especially, you know, when we talk about comics, we're often talking about uh, poses that kind of defy logic or uh, poses that we don't normally see in our everyday lives. Unless, of course, we we lead very interesting lives. Um, but most of us, we don't we we don't see people flying. We don't see people uh, web swinging from building to building or leaping with their humongous bat like cape uh, off of a, off of a giant skyscraper. Um, so since we don't see those poses every day, they become difficult for us. They can become tough. So um, then it becomes, well, how do I draw that? How do I draw a pose like that? Well, as I've been saying, the, the, the keynote message of the day, make it easier. Just break it down. Break it down. And, we're, and now we're going to break it down into even more basic terms than the basic shapes. Because let's say, and I've got a, got a fresh piece of paper here. Let's get really ambitious, right? And I'm going to go in. And yeah, maybe I'll start with a head, right? And I'm going to do a line for the shoulders, okay? This is my, my imaginary shoulder line. And then I'm going to do a line for the spine, and I'm curving the spine down. And then a line for the waist, the hips. If I were to draw, just like the shoulder line, if I were to draw a line from one shoulder straight across to the other shoulder, that's what this line would be. That's my shoulder line. Same thing for my, my waistline, my hip line, uh, one side of the hips to the other. Then I'm going to throw in a leg, 
then this leg is bending up. This leg, I'm going to want to come out here. I'm not going to tell you who this is. I'm going to make you guess as I go. And um, you, probably, you probably will be able to guess very quickly. And I'm going to throw an arm. It's going to be telescoping back here. The other arm is going to come down this way. And the, the really good thing about the, the um, stick figure is it's a real minimal investment. Okay, yeah, if you, you know, if the, just like with the, the basic shapes, if you draw something, you don't like how it, it came out, well, erase it, change it, change it. That wasn't an arm that we spent on you know, this leg isn't a leg that we spent an hour on we just spent two seconds and we just changed it so never be afraid to change all of us we're, we're, none of us are above mistakes all of us uh can draw something that needs correcting at any time this also is a good opportunity to do what i call push the pose you know, if you like to draw, especially those of us who, who love to draw superheroes, we always want to make our superheroes nice and dynamic. You know, we want them to seem exciting, like they're they're jumping off the page. Um, well, you know, and, and a very common problem is when we draw a, a, a figure, a body, that he looks very frozen, very stiff. So um, I always tell people the way to overcome that stiffness is to push that pose. So if my guy here is bending over, you know, if there's a curve to his spine, I want that curve to be a real curve. If he's lifting this leg, he's going to be really lifting it. This one's going to be coming this way. This arm is coming this way. This arm is going to be, this arm is actually going to be telescoping back, which means it's going to be reaching behind him. But we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. Okay. So at a certain point, I'm going to have a stick figure that I'm happy with, that I'm, I'm satisfied with. And, and I think I'm okay with this guy. Now, now, now this stick figure, this stick figure is my new foundation. This is my new underdrawing. And I'm going to add my basic shapes to my stick figure now. So I've drawn my stick figure, and now I'm going to add the spheres for the joints, like the, the shoulders, the cube for that upper body. Notice I keep my cube kind of soft, like so that it, it, it kind of bends with the pose. And I do that to keep, uh, it's another way of combating stiffness in in your figures a uh, smaller cube for the pelvic area spheres for the knees cylinders for the legs please use a wedge for the foot these basic shapes they also are very handy in in dealing with a very frustrating science, what we call foreshortening. Okay, foreshortening, what foreshortening is, is it's when you're taking a shape and you're making it look like it's either coming at you or going away from you. So it involves, it, it, foreshortening is one of the things that really can, can make your drawing look three-dimensional. It involves making your 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 um, your shapes look like they're occupying a three dimensional space, and that they're not just a two dimensional flat drawing. Um, so you know, the thing about foreshortening is it can be a little frustrating. It can be a little tough. I I, I don't want to kid you, uh, and it can be tough because because the scary part about foreshortening is if you don't get it just right, it'll look very off. So don't be frustrated if your first attempts at foreshortening um, aren't perfect. Uh, always keep in mind, um, you will get better. 
the more you do this. And I, I say this to my students all the time. The more you draw, the more you will get better. Um, I always say drawing is a, it's a very physical skill and you need to practice it in order to get better at it. Just the same way, you know, if you, if you wanted to, to be a better baseball player, you have to go to a batting cage and, and take a lot of swings and, and pitch the ball a lot, practice pitching a lot. Um, Drawing is the same way. If you if you never draw, you you will not get better at it. Um, you you can listen to uh, lessons like this, uh, or take classes like like we offer at the Cubert School. Um, but unless you you take that pencil, put it on paper, and you you try to practice what we talk about, you you won't get better at it. So. My, my standing homework assignment to all of my students is always find that thing that gives you trouble, whether it's it's feet, uh, hands, uh, people swinging, jumping, throwing uh, kicks, uh, you know, whatever it is that gives you trouble and draw that. Draw that over and over until you, you, you've improved it, until you're happy with it. Okay. So... I'm, I am foreshortening this arm. I want this arm to telescope back and dealing with these shapes rather than, rather than, uh, you know, anatomy and muscles. Dealing with these shapes just makes foreshortening that arm a whole lot easier. This leg is going to come this way. Are you guessing who this guy is yet? I'm sure some of you have figured it out already. You know what? Maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe I'll move this leg again. See, never be afraid to change things. Especially if you're out to push a pose. making that i'm really popping that foot forward which is why i wanted to make it as large as i did and we could see the underneath of that wedge a little bit because i want to show a little bit of the underside of that that foot and maybe maybe i'm going to bring this arm in even more this way behind that foot okay so my mannequin, whoop, almost forgot a foot. I almost was defeated. See? Get it? As I said, I also teach humor at the Kubert School. It's one of the many classes that I teach at the Kubert School. Like I said before, um, you guys should check out kubertschool.edu, our school's website for any uh all of our programs uh learn about our classes learn about our faculty learn about all the um the different opportunities that we have at the school now because now it's not just our our main everyday curriculum uh which by the way we'll be offering uh fully online starting with the 2021 2022 school year this september uh you can you can enroll at the school full time from anywhere in the world if you could get online you can uh you can enroll and attend the cubert school full time so now i'm sure many of you are very aware of who i'm drawing here not everybody has those eyes right they're familiar. Is your is your spider sense going off here? That's a hint. And, and now at this stage, what I'm doing is I am in the refinement stage. So yeah, I went from stick figure to 
to basic shapes. To now starting to model and mold those basic shapes into my guy, into my character. Now those basic shapes are hopefully looking like human body parts attached to my guy. This arm could shape All right, I guess we can give it away. This is Spider-Man. Were you able to guess that? How quickly? How quickly? At what point did it make sense? So now at this point, I can go in. I could start indicating some of the details on Spidey's costume. Okay, Spidey has those nifty blue areas of his costume. For my money, Spidey has one of the all-time great costume designs. If you're into comics, comics uh, at the Kubert School, we, we talk about all the aspects of commercial art. You know, it's it's not just strictly a comic book school. We're we're out to produce professional commercial artists uh, and and our students are graduates they've they've gotten work all across the commercial art field uh, not just comics but animation uh, illustration um, concept design st uh, storyboarding which is which is a huge huge uh, industry uh, itself um, but of course uh, Given the school's origins and many of our faculty members, comics are a big part of our curriculum still. And so uh, in our classes, especially my classes, um, we do a lot of talking about comics and comic book characters, and, uh, and we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun with it. Uh, so if you're a, a big Spider-Man fan, Batman fan, fan of anything, You'll, you'll truly enjoy your experience there. Now, I'm going to come down this way. Like, don't worry. I'm not going to take you through the webbing that runs throughout Spidey's whole body. Um because you know that would take too long and I, I do want to talk to you about a couple of other things so finish off that leg a little bit give him his boot and i use these black shapes to kind of indicate the darker parts of the blue areas of spidey's outfit because it's not just blue, it's kind of a deep, shinier, reflective blue. And it's always been interpreted in this way. I know Spidey has had a number of costumes over the years now. But this one's always been my favorite. It's always been a beautiful design by the great Steve Ditko. So I, as I said before, I, I'm, I start out very, very lightly, but I do get darker and darker as I get into the later and later stages of my drawing. So a lot of that early underdrawing, a lot of that foundation drawing will either just fade away, like it won't be seen as much uh, with... Or, through the darker lines of the later drawing, or if it if it if it is too prominent, I could always go in and just pick it up with my eraser. Just 
erase things like that. And, oh, how can I do this to Spidey? I've got to give him his spider. His spider insignia. His spider logo. This would be like drawing a Superman without the S. So there's, there's Spidey's spider. And I, I am chickening out by not adding the webs throughout the red parts of his costume but like i said i i don't want to i don't want to take you too much through this so there, there's spidey there's spider-man what do you think does he look spider-man-ish enough and again you know spider-man not a neat, not a, a a super easy character to draw because he does lend his, himself to such dynamic posing. He jumps, he leaps, he bends into all sorts of of unnaturally un, unnatural seeming poses. Um, uh, but going simpler, breaking it that breaking him down uh, into into simple terms makes him a whole lot easier to 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 tackle um uh and you and you saw me take him all the way down to 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 a stick figure to to his most basic most elemental uh, uh stage you know this this was a stick figure like we would draw when we were real little kids you know picking up crayons Really the same way. Draw a head, draw some lines for the spine, for the limbs, and then build on that. Build on that. Again, I you know I may be making it sound um, uh, very easy. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, diminish the the uh, value of practice because that is where the difference will be will be will be seen. Um, uh, you know, I mean, you could, you've seen me talk about this process and demonstrate it, uh, but it's going to be in practicing it where you get good at it. Okay. Where you will, where you will draw a Spider-Man that you are happy with. So hopefully that will, that will come across. Now, like I said, at the very beginning, um, if you could draw any one thing, you could draw anything. And this, this whole basic shape theory can be used to draw whatever you like in whatever style you like. So let's say I'm gonna I'm gonna hop over to a, a clean sheet of paper. Okay. And I'm going to start out with another stick figure. And this guy, I'm gonna give him a bigger head. I'm going to give him his spine. I want to. I want to curve that spine. Straight spines lead to stiff figures. You always want to curve that spine. The shoulders going this way, hips going this way. One arm is going to be going up, and the other arm, uh, maybe the other arm is coming down like this, and the legs are standing outward like that. Okay, so there we go. Another stick figure. Okay, and now I'm my stick figure, and I I deliberately have given him a big head. Don't don't think I'm getting this wrong. On this stick figure, I'm going to throw in a body. This time I'm I'm using more of this oval for a body. Okay, I'm using kind of this bean shape for a body, and the limbs again. I'm going to use cylinders. Cylinders going this way. Maybe I'm going to shorten my bean a little bit. I'm going to throw in another oval over here. Cylinders for the legs. Cylinders for the legs over here. Spheres for the knees. 
So here's for most of the joints, really. And I'm going to give this guy big feet. Big feet. So my underdrawing is in place again. Now I could start to plug in my features, my details. My, my class mantra is always form before detail. Form before detail. Details are the last thing that you should add to any drawing. First, you want to start out with the form. That is the shape of the drawing. So what I'm drawing here, as I hope you're, you're able to tell by now, is a dog, a cartoon dog. So you can see whatever, you know, I, I drew Spider-Man, I drew a, a figure before, whatever it is that you want to draw. Any, any type of character, human, inhuman, real or imagined, fictional, non-fictional, any type of character, you can draw using this, this system. Any, any, any type of character can be broken down, simplified in some way. And now at this stage, just this is, again, the refinement stage. So this is where you polish him up, you tighten him up. He's a, he's a dog, but I don't want him to look rough. Get it? Rough. Humor. So there's my, my dog. People, dogs, cars, spaceships, robots, monsters, any character, any character that's out there, realism, cartooniness, manga, any style that you want. All of it, all of this, this system of basic shapes can be applied to, to all of it. Whether you're drawing your favorite cartoon character or you're drawing a bowl of fruit, you know, whatever it is that you're drawing, everything in the world can be broken down and simplified into, into those six basic shapes. It all started with those basic shapes. So I hope that this has um, that this has made sense. I hope that this uh, this says uh, that you guys got a lot out of this, uh, and I hope that you guys will certainly give this a shot. Give this uh, give this a try. Whatever it is that you want to draw, try out this system, especially those things that that are 
that give you trouble. Try this out. Those poses, those crazy poses that that you know you you've always wanted to go for, but they they've put you off. They they worried you that you wouldn't be able to get them just right. Give them a shot. Break them down. Remember the six basic shapes. Form before detail. So that is my lesson for today. Now, a um, couple of a couple of things. I hope if you've enjoyed this, this is the sort of thing that we talk about at the Kubert School. And like I said before, I hope that you will um, you will check us out at kubertschool.edu. Learn about uh, all the all the the great classes that we have uh, going on. Um, uh, not only do we have the full-time curriculum, and as I said, now starting in September of 2021, uh, for the 2021-2022 school year, uh, we have the online option where anyone can, anyone anywhere in the world, as long as you could get online on a computer, you can attend the school full-time, which is, which is Big news! You 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 can you can be anywhere and attend our school. We also have uh, online uh, classes. Uh, I teach uh, a couple of those, including basic drawing. So if you if you liked what we talked about today, we get a whole lot more in depth in my basic drawing class. Um, and we you know I I teach a, a few of those. We have a great faculty of uh, all different instructors from all across the commercial arts spectrum. Check out our list of instructors, and um, it's 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 an impressive crew. Um, uh, something else I want to keep in mind. I hope everyone will keep in mind. Coming up, coming up this September seventeenth, we have the Kubert Schools Open House. So if you're able to, if you want to drop by the the Kubert School, check us out online, um, uh, and you could uh, uh, you could you could apply for the school online, but you could also register for our open house, and you could come to the school, visit the school, meet our students, meet our staff, meet our faculty. I'll probably be there. You can meet me in person, um, uh, and. You know, that's coming up April 17th, so make your plans now. Uh, if if you have art supply needs, the Kubert School also, ha that also has its own art store, the Kubert Art Store, which you can visit at uh, kubertartstore.com. And anything at all that you want to order, you can order through there. Anything at all that you might need, art supplies, paper, pencils, all the stuff that I use, I get there. Um, so check it out, um, and uh, you 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 will be happy. You you will be satisfied. Um, if you if you liked what I've been talking about, if you've enjoyed my my sketches, you could see more of my work by visiting uh, Fernando Ruiz Everybody um, I'm all over social media, but I I. There, that's my website, and I always post anything that I'm working on, current projects, uh, private commissions, uh, anything that I've got coming up, appearances, personal appearances, convention appearances. I always post it there, uh, and you could always reach out to me there too. Uh, you could you could email me through that website too. So that's Fernando Ruiz, everybody.com. So check it out. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, it's been fun for me. Uh, I hope uh, I hope you'll check out all that information that I uh, that I mentioned before. Remember, kubertschool.edu for all of your Kubert School needs and for for more on that great place. Um, and I hope we could do this again. So that's it for me, everybody. Thanks a lot for joining me. I'm Fernando Ruiz, instructor at the Kubert School, and I hope to see you again. And as always, what I always tell all my students, keep drawing, everybody. Keep drawing.